We'll uh, demonstrate the FAST exam twice uh, on this ultrasound machine. Once as I, I talk us through it with the findings uh, and secondly I'll do it in real time to show uh, how the exam could be performed uh, with uh, probably in less than a minute but uh, I'll go a little slower the first time through so that uh, it's possible to see how it's done. So uh, it's good to apply gel liberally when you do this. You don't want to be reaching for gel or getting poor contact. So I usually apply the gel in all the, the four main regions uh, at the beginning of the exam when the patient first arrives and then I don't need to worry about it again. Uh, we start in the right upper quadrant, adjust for depth and gain which uh, in this well-lit room uh, is the gain tends to be higher than it usually is uh, in, in a darkened room uh, and immediately with a probe parallel with the ribs here with the probe pointer up towards the patient's axilla about the 10 o'clock frame we see here on the screen. Um, let me just <coughs> um, I'll create a this I will use this this the screen is showing right the diaphragm right here this bright white line here and above the diaphragm this area of mirror artifact which appears as if there's liver ab above the diaphragm as well below it. So we're automatically checking two spaces here. We fan back and forth to scan the entire area and the very medial extent we come into the inferior vena cava here and that shows that we've scanned all the way to the patient's left in this space. Coming back we immediately identify the superior pole of the kidney here and Morrison's pouch uh, 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 right here which is the hepatorenal space and again systematically scan from side to side through the entire space to make sure there's not a small collection of free fluid. Conversely one can scan transversely here if one's having a problem and here's a transverse view of the kidney and again scan from top to the bottom right there and back up to the top using a single rib space. Uh, going back into the longitudinal view of the kidney here uh, in this, this uh, model the uh, the inferior pole of the kidney is very clearly seen here and again scanning through it can be very easily done from the same location. Moving on now to the uh, subxiphoid region we have <coughs> the liver right here, uh, the vertebral body back here and we, we kind of hold the probe in such a way as to push the abdominal muscles down and get a view behind the sternum behind the subxiphoid and the heart comes into view nicely here. We often have to adjust the depth so that we can see the posterior pericardium and sometimes gain settings have to be adjusted here as well. Oftentimes we have to increase the gain a little bit. <coughs> um, the anterior pericardium is right here under uh, the marker on the screen and the posterior pericardium back here. Uh, there's no free fluid. The longitudinal image of, of the heart that we described in the lecture appears like this <coughs> with the uh, inferior vena cava coming up here into the, uh, this is the, the aorta right here and the inferior vena cava which is being compressed right now uh, is coming up right here into the heart. Uh, we have to need to compress less. Here is the hepatic vein coming down to the inferior vena cava. All this is liver and this is the space right here uh, uh, on the diaphragmatic uh, surface of the pericardium where free fluid would be detected. Moving over to the left upper quadrant now we're going to orientate the probe parallel with the ribs again. Uh, again might need to make some adjustments for depth uh, because this is a much more superficial view than the, the sub xiphoid view. Uh, we have the diaphragm as on the right above the diaphragm we have mirror artifact suggesting that there's no hemothorax uh, and again we scan through the whole space that's available to us. Our probe is further cephalad and further posterior than, than one might expect. Uh, underneath the diaphragm there's no fluid either. The spleen is clearly seen here. The entire diaphragmatic surface of the spleen can be uh, analyzed here from side to side. We move down a, a rib space and we get an image here of some of the kidney and a rib space or actually probably a piece of air filled bowel completely overlying the splenorenal space which is inconvenient. Um, maybe we can just get a sense of it uh, of the, of the splenic, splenorenal space back here um, or maybe moving down a little bit 
but in, in general this, this exam is slightly limited because of the presence of this, this gas right here that's overlying this, this key space that we want to, to analyze. Um, in the case that you do a fast exam, which is limited by some technical consideration like this, uh, you should bear it in mind and, and include it in your report. If you truly can't make a fully negative exam, you should just mention the limitations that you encountered. The inferior pole of the kidney is seen right here on the screen, uh, sliding up and down over the psoas muscle. This psoas muscle is normal. Uh, you'll be looking right in here, this potential space here for free fluid. Moving on now to the suprapubic region. Uh, the probe is slid down all the way to touch the patient's uh, uh, pubis. Um, the, on the screen, the bladder can be seen here. Uh, gain usually needs to be de diminished here to uh, bring out the, uh, uh, the structures behind the bladder uh, without being washed out by gain artifact. Uh, we start as low as we can. We find the prostate and we scan north in this transverse plane. We find right above the prostate, we find these two symmetrical stru roundy structures back here, which are hypoechoic. They're the seminal vesicles, they're not free fluid. We scan cephal out of them, and this is really the area that we're most likely to encounter free fluid right above them. This structure right here is the sigmoid colon and, and the rectum um, uh, right here. And we scan up systematically to the, the dome of the bladder. And that completes the FAST exam. Um, we can just run through this once more in real time. Um, and again, I probably won't be able to speak fast enough to keep up with this. So uh, I'll just uh, do the exam. And uh, uh, when you watch, you can make sure that all the 10 potential spaces in the four regions are examined. So starting in the right upper quadrant, pleural space, subdiaphragmatic space, Morrison's pouch, inferior pole of kidney right here, all the way through from side to side. Subxiphoid, adjust depth. Anterior and posterior pericardium all the way from top to bottom. Left upper quadrant. Adjust depth. Diaphragm, pleural space all the way through as much as av available. Subphrenic space, splenorenal space, Again, a little, bit, a little bit difficult to evaluate, a little bit fluid right here in the stomach and the splenic hilum there with the vessels. The rest of the kidney has no fluid around it. Inferior pole of the kidney right here. Again, examined all the way through the inferior pole. And then finally in the suprapubic region, starting with prostate, seminal vesicles, and right here we need to decrease I'll gain a little bit. And actually, it looks like there might be a small physiological amount of free fluid right here in the pelvis on this model. Uh, it looks kind of pointy to me. And uh, we can see it right here, um, which sort of uh, between these loops of bowels. There's probably a small physiological amount of free fluid. That completes the FAST exam. Now, uh, just uh, uh, we can certainly also uh, uh, in the FAST exam, make use of the technological advances I mentioned to you in the introduction. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, miniaturization, affordability, and high image quality are, as I, as I said at that time, the very components of the ultrasound technology that are making this available to more and more clinicians. Uh, and we do actually have a device here, uh, which is handheld now, um, and is uh, perfectly adequate to do the FAST exam we've just described, and I'll be happy to uh, run, that, run through that right now. This machine is now booted up. Um, just by opening the lid, it turned on. And again, to start from the beginning here and going kind of in real time, uh, we're going to start in the right upper quadrant. Uh, we can evaluate the pleural space right here above my thumb. It's back, backwards and forwards the pleural space. We can see the superior pole of the kidney in Morrison's pouch right here. The inferior pole of the kidney is, is quite, quite nicely seen um, right here with the psoas muscle right behind it. Uh, we, that's the complete right upper quadrant. We move over here. We need to adjust the depth a little bit. 
uh, to get the, uh, and we need to increase the gain a little bit, get a picture of the heart. And again, scan from top to bottom of the heart. We can see the anterior and posterior pericardium very nicely on this image. No free fluid. Going to the left upper quadrant, our probe is parallel with the patient's ribs. Uh, we can see the diaphragm very nicely here with the spleen below it, the white line of the diaphragm. Uh, we need to decrease the gain a little bit now here. Um, and you can see the, <coughs> the splenorenal space, just see it right here. Uh, we're just the, the, the hint to the top of the kidney, the bowel gas that's been uh, impeding us is, is, is resolving a little bit, moving on. And uh, I think we can probably say that there's no splenorenal fluid. So when we go down a couple of rib spaces, um, we can see the inferior pole of the kidney right here on this, on this uh, image with a, with a psoas right behind it. Uh, needs to decrease our gain a little bit. And here's the inferior pole moving up and down with respirations and there's no free fluid around it. Suprapubic blue view transverse here. Go down to the pubis. Once again, we can see the, the bladder. We need to decrease our gain. so that we don't overwhelm the uh, retrovesical space with uh, ultrasound and cause uh, posterior acoustic enhancement gain artifact. Uh, here we have the prostate just in view, the seminal vesicles. Now we get up to the area that we're most likely to find free fluid in the uh, suprapubic evaluation. Uh, and we scan all the way through until the dome of the bladder. Uh, and in this, in this occasion, I don't think we can say that we're seeing any free fluid. The, uh, the uh, um, small amount of free fluid we saw on the previous image, I, I don't think, I think it's resolved. Um, and it's definitely a, a physiological volume. Okay, that completes our module of the FAST exam. Uh, hopefully uh, this has uh, made its performance and utility uh, a little bit clearer. Um, uh, for those who are starting out, uh, uh, on this pathway, uh, uh, lots of practice um, is, is needed, but uh, after a while, uh, this becomes an extremely useful tool uh, in management of, of trauma patients. Thank you very much.